My name is Troy Prasovsky. I'm a DeKalb agronomist. I'm here to talk to you today about blackleg. Blackleg's a very common disease in canola and one that we should be aware of. Today I'm going to talk to you about identification, high risk, low risk situations, and best management practices. Now it's time to identify blackleg. Now the optimal time to identify blackleg is going to be later on in the season. Once we've went through the crop and swath, pull some of the stems, cut them at ground level, then you'll be able to rate them. However, we can see blackleg symptoms as early as the cotyledon stage and all the way up until those later stages um, such as swathing. So what I would do at this stage is I would pull some of the bottom leaves, look for damage, look for lesions, Often we'll see a, a lighter center and then um, it's kind of darker on the outside and then this yellowing, this chlorosis. The yellowing is, is this organic toxins being pushed to the outer edges of the leaves and um, that's a telltale sign of blackleg. Another one is if we turn this plant over we can, we can see little black raised dots. It's called pycnidia. They almost look like pepper or like whiskers raised up from the leaf tissue and um, another great indicator of blackleg. So here I found a plant that, uh, that is showing signs of blackleg on these lower leaves that we were talking about. And it also shows another unique symptom of blackleg. If we look at the base of this plant, we see what we call a blackleg canker. It's a swelling at the base of the plant right at that soil surface. So what we would do in the fall is we would find these plants that are showing symptoms of blackleg and we would cut them off at the soil surface. And then looking at the vascular tissue at the plant, what we would do is we would rate this from zero to five. Now a zero rating would be no infection, no black whatsoever. And a one or a two is when the black leg starts to infect the plant. Um, it can be pie shaped, there can be little dots on the edge of the plant, um, and then all the way up to five. And five is plant mortality, it's, uh, it's dead. So that would be the rating scale from zero to five. Now that we can identify black leg, it's important to measure our risk. Now something that would put us at a high risk situation would be having a two year rotation or tighter. Now the problem with this is it takes uh, up to four years for these little canola residue pieces to actually break down in the soil. These pieces do carry black leg disease on them. So that's why we often recommend a one in four rotation. Number two would be using a moderately susceptible or a susceptible variety. That would put you at high risk. Using a resistant variety would definitely lower your risk. So number three, very important, is scouting. You want to go out there and see if you have the disease. If you have the disease, you're obviously in a high risk situation. Number four that would put you in a low risk situation is using certified number one seed. So now that we know how to identify blackleg and we know it puts us in high risk and low risk situations, I'm going to give you some best management practices. First best management practice would be is if you see blackleg in your fields early in the season would be to apply a fungicide at that first herbicide application timing. Two would be growing a variety such as DeKalb 7444 BL. Not only does it yield well, but it's also resistant to blackleg pathogenic groups two, three, four, and T. This plant comes vigorously out of the ground and its standability makes it an ease to swath. Mm -hmm.